Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do a wooden topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank have inspired me. I hope they can inspire you as well. We'll have links below this video to their sites here. Rabbi Shalom Arash, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Lone Anava, Rabbi Yuval Obadir, Rabbi Daniel Asr, Nason Baruch Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Michael Skobak, Jesus for Judaism, Rabbi David Ashir, and Rabbi Ron Uvey. As well, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have a link below this video to my first video, which explains what MLM for the Soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So this is, uh, again, taken from a weekly Parsha Insights by Rabbi Eli Mansour. Um, and this is related to Parsha Lech Lecha, which is the Parsha that's coming up. Um, and this is called A Sense of Loss, is my title for the topic. Um, so in the beginning of Parsha Lech Lecha, Hashem commands Avram Avinu to move to the land of Israel, Instructing him, go forth from your land, from your birthplace, and from your father's home to the place where I will show you. Many commentators observe that the sequence in this command seems to be reversed. A person first leaves his parents' home, then his hometown, and then his country. In Hashem's command to Aram, however, he tells him to, just, to do just the opposite. To leave first his country, then his place of birth, and then his parents' home. How are we to understand the sequence in this command? So one answer that has been suggested is based upon the story told in Sefer Malachim, uh, the second uh, book, chapter 2, about Eliyahu's departure from earth. Just before Hashem told Eliyahu to, took Eliyahu to the heavens, the students of his main disciple and successor, Elisha, approached Elisha and informed him that Eliyahu would soon be taken from him. Curiously, they assumed that although they were privy to this information through prophecy, Elisha was not. But Elisha then replied, I too know, implying that there was something novel about his being aware of this information. Even though Elisha was clearly a greater prophet than his students, nevertheless, he assumed that it was more likely for them to know about Elio's imminent departure than it was for him to know. Why? So that's the question. So the Arizal described the impact of a righteous person by way of an analogy to the human heart. When the heart begins to fail and cannot properly pump the blood, the body's extremities sense the problem before the other organs of the body do. The organs closer to the heart receive their supply of blood, until the heart approaches complete dysfunction. Before then, they are not impacted by its deficient operations. The extremities, however, are affected as soon as the heart's functioning begins to decline, as they receive blood only when the heart pumps with its full force. So the same is true of a tzaddik. When a tzaddik begins to depart, it is those who are more distant from him who first experience a sense of loss. They receive inspiration from the tzaddik only when he is, quote, fully operational, so to speak. And thus, once he begins leaving, they are the first ones to feel an effect. Therefore, Elisha's disciples figured that only they, who were more distant from Elio than Elisha was, sensed his imminent departure. Elisha responded to them that, in fact, he too felt the effect of, Elisha's, of Elio, excuse me, Elio's departure, because Elio was leaving the world very soon, and so the effects were felt even by those closest to him. So Hashem's command to Avram Avinu has been understood along similar lines. The sequence in this verse is arranged not in the order of Avram's departure, but rather according to the effect of his departure. Abraham's departure was first felt by those in the remote areas of his sphere of influence, meaning his fellow countrymen, who did not live near him. Then his absence was felt by his hometown where he lived, and finally was felt by his father's home, his family. Those closest to him felt his impact and influence even as he began making his way to Eretz Yisrael, just as the organs near the heart continue receiving a full supply of blood even after the heart has begun failing. It was those remotest from Avram who sensed his absence first and felt the profound loss of the inspirational influence of the great Sadiq who had been living among them. So now we know that how, a, how important a Sadiq is in a community, um, that how people feel that sense of loss. And I hope we never get, have to feel that sense of loss and that we will all merit soon to see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the building of our final and everlasting base. Hamigdash, Amen, and thanks for watching.